Good morning. Today is a wild weather Wednesday, I'll declare it, because I drove up here. It wasn't even raining in ball ground, and I got about 15 miles up the road, and I'll be blasted if it wasn't just falling a flood, and I was going slow. I was driving like an old grandma, and I thought, oh, well, I think it's better to drive like an old grandma than end up in the ditch, don't y'all? So I hope that wherever you are, you are safe, you are dry, and you are prepared for a little bit more thunderous weather. I don't know how long it's going to last, but according to the weather, man, we've got about 30% chance of a little bit more of it coming in. So hunker down and be ready for some. It is ready to celebrate and to honor our fathers. And today, today's program is about a father's love or the absence of a father's love. And it's going to be very hard for some people to handle this. It's going to be very encouraging for some people to handle this. It's going to be very enlightening for some people. And one of the groups of people I think about every time I think about the situation that the world is in because of absent fathers, because addicted fathers, because of fathers who have never been there for their children, I think about a school teacher, and every day, 30, 32, 34 kids walk into a class. From those 30 to 32 to 34 kids, there will be three to five children who are raised in a fatherless home, raised by possibly one or two drug addicts, or raised by foster parents. So we are in a world that we have created ourselves. We took the Bible out of here. We took the Bible out of there. We took the Ten Commandments out of here. We took the Ten Commandments out, commandments out of there. And what did we get? The world has run amok. We're more worried about getting tickets to a big concert where they're going to be smoking joints and doing everything else they're doing than worried about getting your kids to Sunday school. We have created, sad to say, a bunch of problems and quite a few problems. And when we look at... This week, the reason I'm doing today's program is because in this week, I have counseled, talked to, and, and been with four people who lost their child to drugs from ages 28 to 38. One of them didn't find their child for 11 days, and then what they found was a decomposed body. We are in a world of crisis. We're in a world of crisis because fathers are absent from the homes because the Bible is absent from the homes, because making your kid's mind is absent from the home. We are not doing what we should do. Um, I'm as guilty as anybody, because when I was a widow and Nick was turning nine years old, gave him the world, you know, do this, do this, make sure he has this, do this. And, and what do you get out of that? You don't teach them to to really stand up for themselves. You don't teach them to do what they should do. We're all guilty. But when I think about the teachers who every single day, Don and I were going to schools talking to children, and we were telling them about drugs and how desperately you need to get away from it. You know, report your parents. If your parents are doing drugs, report your parents. And one kid came up to us after the class and he said, how can I let somebody know what my mom, what my dad's doing? He said, I don't live with my mom, I live with my dad. We move a lot of times in the middle of the night. And, and, and a counselor came up to me and said, oh my gosh, that answers so many questions about that kid. Now I know why they were in the condition they were in. There's so many lifelines that are a teacher. A teacher can be that lifeline. A teacher... Um, somebody in a store even can notice that you can tell that a child is neglected or abused as we can't, I can't be somebody's father, but I can be somebody's caretaker. I can say, hey, this kid needs some help. If you're one of those people that notice that there's somebody out there, maybe a, a teacher, a counselor, maybe even somebody at a convenience store that sees you coming in every day and they see that you're battered down or maybe the kid doesn't ever have a clean bath or, you know, just different things. Find somebody to get those children help because a father's love can make you or break you. I'm a product of it. Um, sadly, I didn't get to spend any time with my father, and I'm a little bit joyful of that and really, really sad of that. My father was a heroin addict when my mother became pregnant with me, and um, the last time my mom saw my dad, he was on a jail cell in Fulton County, and he was detoxing. And she walked away and was going to give me away, but decided to keep me. 
and the rest is history. Um, mother then married somebody when I was five years old who adopted me, and the rest of that's history because that didn't last but a few years. So I was a fatherless child, and so if you're a fatherless child, you're always looking for your father's love. Well, we have a father's love. God loves all of us. He loves each and every one of us equally. It doesn't matter if we've done wrong. It doesn't matter if we're not perfect. He loves each and every one of us. And so today's program is going to be about a father's love. And I've chosen some dads to honor today. And um, if your dad's not up there, it's because I didn't have a picture of him because I jerked out a bunch of them of, of men that I would love to honor, men that I would love to celebrate, and so many of them. And sadly, there are a couple of pictures on there of people that weren't good dads or weren't good husbands, but might have been a good dad. And there are often men who abuse their wives but are good, good, good to their kids. I don't understand that, but it is. Now, here's a man that we should celebrate every day because... Reverend Wallace Parks is a good dad to the community, and so wouldn't it be appropriate that we would start with honoring him and Precious Carol? And thank you for my beautiful card today. Love them and, and love what they mean to the community. So, so I think it's appropriate that we start honoring dads with honoring this very, very special dad. And dads, remember this, from tiny seeds grow, go, grow mighty trees because you can plant a seed in your child's heart, in his soul, you can make a difference. You can be that, that divine factor. You know, maybe you can't explain God to a child that's four years old, but you can explain love. And this, y'all met Matthew when he was out walking with the cross in ball ground. I got to meet his two sons as they were walking the last day with him. And I thought how appropriate that was for this dad who hasn't lived a perfect life and hasn't had a perfect life to walk and carry the cross with his two sons with him. And I just, I had to include Matthew. That just, you know, has to happen. So, so to him. And then this is, this is a very special gentleman who is a dad of two children and four grandchildren and just a wonderful community leader and, and loves the communities that we serve. To Woody Snell, um, happy Father's Day to you. And, and to my dear friend, Jenny Byers, who we were showing her the old McClure house. So... So it's about who you are and how you give back. Now this, this is the daddy of the First Baptist Church in Bowground. This is Mr. Glenn Dinsmore. And Glenn is such a good man and such a, just a fine, fine person to so many people. Whether you are his friend, his family, he's always there. Always there. So, and I don't know if y'all are recognizing that other dude, but that other dude is Tom Cruise. So... And this is Calvin Farmer, and I guess Calvin Farmer could be declared one of the great fathers of Ball Ground and the Ball Ground community because he, he grew, he, he nourished the community, he, he was way beyond his time. He was way, way advanced in all the things that he did in his time. And uh, to be born in the 1800s and grow up in the early 1900s, just amazing man. So... So we're honoring so many men in so many different ways, and each of them. Now this, this is one of my favorite things I did this year. We went to the community building, and there was a play, Follow the Yellow Brick Road, and it was Follow the Yellow Brick Road to Jesus. It was amazing. And so if you have an absent father, you really don't have an absent father because you have God, and you can say, God, please help me. Please help me get through this. Last night I prayed all night long. And I kept saying, I know you're tired of hearing from me, Lord, but here we go again. And I just thought about, we, it's Father's Day, and I have always wanted to have a perfect dad. Didn't have it. Didn't get it. Didn't, didn't get to enjoy that. And it does make a difference in how your life flows and, and what you'll take and what you'll give. And, and often you give way too much because you want to be... Yeah, it's, it's got to be perfect. Well, no, that's not how it goes. So, and to this man, we have to honor a very, very special father. This is Brady Singleton's dad. This is Ron Singleton, and this is with baby Zanna. <clears throat> baby Zanna's dad passed before she was born. Baby Zanna is going to be raised by us and the community, and she is going to flourish because we're going to let her know how much she was loved and she's so precious, and she looks so much like her grandmother on her dad's side, and it just uh, it just blows my mind, but so precious, and, and I loved seeing her with Ron, and she took up with Ron and Shirley, 
Now this is some of my favorite dads because we have, it, it's crazy. There's Grady, there's David, there's Ron, there's the Blackstones, what precious, precious folks. Those are people that have gone on to glory and, and they earned the right to go on to glory because they were such good people here on earth, just so many people. And Grady, Grady Anderson is still responsible for kids going to college now because Ron and Shirley set up the scholarship. And I hope in the near future you're going to get to meet the, one of the young ladies who won a scholarship this year. And I hope to have Peyton on very soon. And, uh, and, and let's, let's honor those who are gone from here but still doing for somebody else. And that's my precious Uncle Fred. We just buried him a few months ago. And um, it, is, it is one of those things. He had six children. He was a great father, but he was a great father to the community. He wanted everybody to be happy, and he wanted to do things for a lot of people. Just a good, good guy. And that's, that's what dads are for. So we, we know that they love. Now, this is one of my favorite dads, Rob Jones. What a good, good guy. And um, sadly, his son-in-law has been facing all kinds of medical problems, and, and it just is one of those things. You don't expect your kids or their spouses to be sicker than you are. You know, Rob's out working all the time and staying healthy, and Sonia's husband has had all kinds of medical issues, and, and it's just, we don't know what the Lord's going to give us to bear. We don't know. But Rob is such a good guy. And this is, I laughed because my friend Vicki has this on her cup. It says, not today, Satan. And when she told me that was her favorite cup, I laughed. And I said, well, I got that sign for Mother's Day, too. So, so not today, Satan. So, so pray your way through the day. If you haven't had a relationship with your dad, there's a man who is a father to so many of us, including me. Papa Jack Bryson was the dad that we could all go to, we could talk to, we could, he would mentor, he would, he would help, he would help heal. He was just a good, good guy and, and sweet Joyce. My gosh, what precious, precious people. And how they are missed, how they are missed and how they were loved and, and loved beyond. And there is another precious, precious dad. There's precious A.C. Kaler. Love him so much, and, and sweet Linda. They are just such good, good people, and that's what a dad, every kid deserves a dad like them, but we didn't get that. We didn't get that. Many of us didn't get that. Many of us get, didn't get to grow up with our dad. Many of us wouldn't have wanted to grow up with our dad because he'd have been a bad influence, and that's sad because today's world reflects that. And I love this saying. One of my friends, Fred Wyndham's sister, actually sent this to me. Sometimes obeying God will make you look crazy, get you deleted, mocked, and even laughed at. But when the rain started to fall, Noah didn't look that stupid anymore. And I think that's pretty appropriate because, yeah, he was saying, get ready, get ready, the earth's going to flood, and people are looking at him like, yeah, you're nuts, Bubba. Well, he wasn't nuts after those days passed. Okay, now you know. This is my father. This is my father as he was being taken into the Fulton County Jail. And um, he... My father was part of a very wealthy family in Atlanta, and he was addicted to drugs. And the last time my mom saw him, and so as I've dealt with this pain with my arm, my doctors thought I was really weird because I wouldn't take anything for pain. And I finally, I would take Advil or ibuprofen, and they're like, we'll give you something. We'll give you something stronger. I said, no, you don't understand. I said, I come from a line of addicts. I don't want anything for pain. And often... Somebody becomes an addict because they try it one time. Somebody becomes an addict because somebody says, this will really make you feel good. This week, y'all, I've talked to four people who have buried their children between the ages of 28 and 38. And when the lady was sharing that they didn't find her son for 11 days and then the condition his body was in, I thought no mother, no father should have to deal with that. But we are dealing with it every single day. These are not poor people in the ghetto. These are not crazy people. These are people, many from very affluent white families, very affluent smart kids who got hooked on drugs. This is the article about my dad. The FBI adds woes of the dentist's son held in robbery. He and another gentleman, gentleman were robbing an elderly couple to get money for drugs. And that's what happened to the world. You know, the drug addicts have to supply their needs, and so they rob, they cheat, they steal. They do everything they can to take care of their habit. And my dad was one of the first. And you think about that, y'all. That was 1951. 
1951. We have faced a drug crisis in America since 1951 and long before. Now, this is, this is my daughter Dawn's dad, and she loved her dad. And I divorced her dad for a reason, but, um, it, you know, it was crazy because he wasn't a good husband at all. He was very abusive, but he was a very loving father. And so you can't take that from him, and you can't take it from her. And she, she learned to fish. She learned to, learn to hunt, and she loved to learn the outdoors because of her daddy. So no matter what faults a dad has, hopefully they still have some good qualities. And, and her dad had some, he instilled some good qualities in her. Now, today I was hoping to have you a new song by Dwight Sanford, but he hasn't finished it yet. It's called Daddy's Lunchbox, and guess who it was about? his daddy. So all you get today is that picture of Eamon Sanford because he can't get it done. I'm going to whip him. He's trying, but Astrid is late getting in with the backup vocals, so you're not going to get to hear it yet. I really, really wanted it for Father's Day, and he's trying, but he's not getting there yet. So but it's a song that he wrote, and um, the guys who've been doing the backup for him really, really liked the song, and I can't wait for y'all to hear it, but you won't get to hear it by Father's Day, I don't reckon. And then here's a dad that I want to really honor, because since he was on the program, I've heard from so many people who said what a great teacher he is, what a great mentor he is, and that's what it's about. You know, when we talk about these teachers every day when 32, 34, 35 kids walk in a class, what does the teacher expect to get out of that? What do they see? What do they learn from those children? They often learn that the children have no hope other than the time that they're in school. They have no food to eat other than the time that they're in school. They have nobody who pats them on the back and says, way to go, buddy, other than the time they're in school. So to all teachers, we salute you, but especially those who step up to the plate and make a difference. And this, this has got to be... One of the sweetest pictures ever, and that is of precious Eddie Brackett and Loretta, and um, what a sweet, good dad. What a sweet, sweet, good dad. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. Father's Day is about honoring those dads and about remembering those dads, and, and, and this, is, this is our last one, and this is my favorite because it is my son-in-law, Siggy, and his beautiful, his beautiful daughter, my granddaughter, Victoria, as what they were at the Emmys. Isn't it sad that her mom wasn't there to be there because she chose suicide? Suicide is often a product of mental illness. Angela was battling. She was battling so much, and a doctor prescribed a drug that said may cause suicide. It is so sad that in America today, we can all walk into a doctor's office and the doctor thinks he's going to solve the problem and you have to set your boundaries. You know, do you trust that pill? And this, you talk about an example. If you go to Lonnie Fountain's house, you're going to get a prayer. If you go to Lonnie's Fount Lonnie Fountain's house and you need a little something, he'll give you a little hand up and he'll help you out. That's the kind of man Lonnie Fountain is. And uh, again, 2016, 2019 world champion fisherman. So congratulations to him. We are so blessed. And, and this, you know, we talk about families. When you blend a family and you have your kids, his kids, our kids, these kids, Sometimes it doesn't work. This is an example of how it does work because never once have I heard Joel say, that's Jane's daughter, that's my daughter. Never once have I heard Joel say, that's Jane's grandkids. Those are Joel and Jane's grandkids. And I said, I love that about blended families because you come together and you do everything you can for the children. And today's program is about the children. And um, what we can do in America today to stop the drug abuse, to, to report drug dealers, to do everything you can to get your kids help because it is a tough, tough time. And they are growing up in a society that the morals are gone, the Bible has been taken out of so many places, the Ten Commandments were taken out of so many places, and often they feel hopeless. And that's why the four parents that I talked to last week that lost their children, none of them ever thought it would get to that. They said we knew that they had a problem, but we never thought it would get to that. 
Well, it will. It will. And you will be standing over a grave. And I tell everybody, don't give up on your kids. As long as they're alive, there is hope. Once they're in the grave, if they're not saved, there's no hope. There's no changing it and there's no bringing it back. So, so get in the Word. Get in the Bible. If you have a kid that's on drugs, sit them down, read the Bible to them, and make them listen. They, they won't hear half of what you say. But do it anyway. So today, we're going to let Dawn read something that she did on the program about 12 years ago, I believe. And Judge Harry Doss was with her, and it was when Judge Brenda Weaver had just started drug court. And drug court, I can tell you, drug court in Pickens County has saved a lot of lives. But recently, there has been an influx of some of the kids who were in drug court who did well, then did drugs again, and a couple of them have died. They died because their body had worked its way out of doing the drugs and couldn't handle them when they did it again. I know somebody whose son was living in a cardboard box in Atlanta. He had come off drugs for a short period of time. He went back to Atlanta living in a cardboard box. His family owned a 1,000 acres or more. They could have had anything. He had anything. He chose a world of drugs. Today, he is drug-free, has been drug-free for several years. The last time he gave in and did heroin, he was standing next to a man who did the same exact heroin and died. He died. And that woke him up. You can preach to him. You can pray with him. You can do everything you can possibly do. And until they decide that they want to change, they're not going to change. But today, that young man is healthy and happy and working and is a true miracle of God. So put every single drug addict on your prayer list. If you're a church and you don't welcome addicts, then shame on you because they have got to get help somewhere. And if it means that first step is walking down to an altar in a church, that can be the beginning of a brand new life. So every single church, I have a, this is my prayer cloth from Daily Walk Ministries and and I, I treasure it and I I thank them so much for this. If you are a church and you know there's a mom sitting in your um, congregation, if a dad sitting there who who has a child who's possibly on drugs, give them a prayer cloth and say slipping under their mattress, slipping into their clothes, slip it somewhere and, and lift that kid in prayer because there's another kid today before I get off the air there will be another child die. There will be somebody's child die from drugs and they will be calling the funeral home to say I need to make arrangements. Happens every day in America and it's very very sad and remember it takes that one time. So Dawn's going to read you this poem now. I hope it will touch your heart. The last time we did this um, I got so many calls and so many people who wanted to hear this again and so here we go and remember one time that's all it takes and you're hooked. But by the grace of God She's here. She's here. Now, Dawn is going to read a poem. You've never heard it. I've heard it several times, and it hits me in the gut every time I hear it. This was written by a young Indian girl in prison. She She was was 19 years old. Yeah. Would you please read that and share it with everybody? Yes. Okay, the name of it is My Name is Meth. I destroy homes. I tear families apart, take children, and that's just the start. I'm most calm... I'm more costly than diamonds, more precious than gold. The sorrow I bring is a sight to behold. If you need me, remember I'm easily found. I live around you, in schools and in town. I live with the rich, I live with the poor. I live down the street and maybe next door. I'm made in a lab, but not like you think. I can be made under the kitchen sink. In your child's closet or even in the woods. If this scares you to death, well, it certainly should. I have many names, but there's one you would know best. I'm sure you've heard of me. My name is Crystal Meth. My power is awesome. Try me, you'll see. But if you do it, you may never break free. Just try me once and I might let you go. But try me twice and I'll own your soul. When I possess you, you'll steal and you'll lie. You'll do what you have to just to get high. The crimes you'll commit for, your narco- for my narcotic charms will be worth the pleasure you feel in your arms. You'll lie to your mother. You'll steal from your dad. When you see their tears, you won't even be sad. But you'll forget your morals and how you were raised. I'll be your conscience. I'll teach you my ways. I'll take kids from parents and parents from kids. 
I'll turn people from God and separate friends. I'll take everything from you, your looks and your pride. I'll be with you always right by your side. You'll give up everything, your family, your home, your friends, your money, then you'll be alone. I'll take and I'll take till I, you have nothing more to give. When I'm finished with you, you'll be lucky to live. If you've tried me, be warned, this is no game. If given the chance, I'll drive you insane. I'll ravish your body, I'll control your mind. I'll own you completely, your soul will be mine. The nightmares I'll give you while lying in bed, the voices you hear from inside of your head, the sweats, the shakes, the visions you'll see, I want you to know these are all gifts from me. But then it's too late, and you'll know in your heart that you are mine, and we shall not part. You'll regret that you tried me, they always do, but it was you that came to me, not I to you. You knew this would happen many times you were told, but you challenged my power and chose to be bold. You could have said no and just walked away. If you could live that day over, now what would you say? I'll be your master. You'll be my slave. I'll even go with you when you go to your grave. Now that you have met me, what will you do? Will you try me or not? It's all up to you. I can bring you more misery than words can tell. Come take my hand. Let me lead you to H. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside-down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? The mountains are calling and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing in Ball Ground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park, and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third-generation race car driver, and we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. It's amazing, I never saw till today How foolish a son I have been The grass is not greener here And nobody cares But I know where I've got a 
friend He's still setting my place at the table He's still calling my name in prayer He still looks up the road Somehow he knows The prodigal son is coming home find out what I needed was there all along so I'm leaving this place I want to see my father's face and hear him say son welcome home I was still a great way from my father's house he came running to greet this lost son i said your servant i'll be he never heard me he cried my prodigal son has come home He's still setting my place at the table. He's still calling my name in prayer. But now I'm in the right place. I'm just a trophy of God's grace. The prodigal son has come home yes i'm in the right place it's all because of grace the prodigal son is coming home coming home the prod Son has come home. I have journeyed through the long dark. verse 
so precious. Here is why. I've had visions And I've had dreams I've even held them in my hand But I never My dreams might slip through Like they were only Grains of sand Well, I've been young But I'm older now I'm glad I can say there has been beauty these eyes have seen. But it was in the night when I faced the storms in my life. Oh, that's where. to kind of pick a little bit on it. And uh, I don't really think of myself as a, as a picker so much, as a singer so much, as just a guitar pick player. But this is an old one.
when you died on Calvary's tree. thorns on your precious brow and if ever I have loved thee oh Jesus tis now I'll love thee in life and I'll I'll praise Thee as long as Thou lendest me the breath. And say when the death do, why someday it'll look like cold on all our brow. But on that day we can say, if ever I've loved Thee, Jesus, tis now, Lord, tis After that performance here at ETC, um, Lance Carpenter had written a song about Alzheimer's and sadly he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and the magic, the music, the melody of that amazing man um, was taken from us and he was such a good man and he was a dad to many. He was just a great encourager and just such a wonderful man so of course we would have to honor him today. He is greatly missed, and uh, to Matt Dibler, he was he was one of Matt's greatest inspirations. He would just help Matt. He would write songs for Matt. He just they were together. They were a, a magical duo, and I know that Matt misses him greatly. You know, when we think about our heavenly Father, he isn't going to throw us out. He isn't going to destroy us. He isn't going to do anything except to be there for us. And if you reach out to him, I, I was sitting here thinking about, I have three friends who lost, one lost her only son, Marianne lost Michael, her only child. Nadine lost a son. And so as Father's Day comes around, Michael and, and Nadine's son's children, no dad there. Sandra lost a son, same time, almost the same time I lost Angela. It is so crazy how Father's Day is going to come. It's going to be upon us. It's going to be Father's Day. People are going to be grilling steaks, having hot dogs, hamburgers. But somebody's going to be visiting their child, child's grave. And then somebody's going to be visiting their dad's grave. You have one shot here at this life as being a dad. And um, I was thinking today about a, a certain... You know, my girls both grew up without that father influence from biological father because of alcohol. And everybody always, you know, I don't drink at all. My friends drink some, a little, some, a little more. I don't drink. I don't drink because I choose not to. When I look at how many children have been robbed of a great life because their parent chose to drink, maybe the money that should have gone for groceries went for alcohol. Maybe um, a kid was killed because of a DUI. There's so many reasons that I choose not to drink. I ran a stop sign many, many years ago after two drinks myself. I quit. I said, that's it. Not doing that anymore. Two drinks. And it was my choice. And your life is your choice. You choose to do. You choose to um, be a great parent. You choose, choose to come in and buy yourself a new pickup truck and leave your kids sitting there with nothing. I mean, we choose. Life is about our choices. But as Father's Day approaches... I was that kid. I'm now the age that my father died of brain cancer. I'm now the age that my mother died of melanoma. When I was diagnosed with melanoma, I thought, God, this is not funny. So I had a little talk with God, and I said, okay, what are you trying to teach me? Why are you doing this to me? Why are you giving me this, knowing that I'm my parents' age, and they both died with cancer, and then you do this to me? Well, I'm not going to show you all the gruesome pictures, but six weeks ago yesterday, it was pretty gruesome for me. And today I am healing. I am healing. Your prayers make a difference. 
we can make a difference in the life of other people. And I've seen it. I've witnessed it. I have lived it. When I looked at my arm on Monday, I don't ever look at it directly. I make them take a photograph, and then I look at the photograph because, to be quite blunt, when I was having to change the bandages myself, it was really getting to me. So now our team is changing the bandages at Northside Hospital, which thank God for them. They're amazing. And it is healing, y'all. It is healing. But we know that prayer... Prayer brings on growth and healing and brings on hope. So if you know of a family that is struggling because of alcoholism, because of drug addiction, because those kids are going to be left on the wayside if the parents die of a drug overdose, please, please, please lift them in prayer. That is the one thing we can do for each other. I was going through the Bible, and Tracy's going to put up a Bible verse, and I hope I can see it. Y'all know I don't wear glasses. And I hope I can see it because the red, the red words and the glare on here, I'm not sure I can read it, but we're going to go to the uh, Bible verse. And this is John chapter 5, and it says, Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his Father doing. Because whatever his Father does, the Son also does. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all he does. Yes, and he will show him even greater works than these, so that you will be amazed. For just the Father raises the dead and gives them life. Even to the Son gives life to whom he pleased to give it. Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted entrusted all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. We have a Heavenly Father, and we are to honor him. We are to honor his Son, Jesus. And we need to teach our children that. And we need to teach a father, if he's the head of the household, to teach his children about the love of Jesus, the love of God, because that is true love. No matter what you're facing today, God is not going to get mad at you. He's not going to get angry. If you do something stupid and we're all going to do something stupid today, I guarantee you, you can get a piece of paper and pencil out and you can write down today, I'm going to do something stupid. We all do. That's life. That is what life is. But we have a choice, and the choice is ours. And and I want to share a little tiny bit. This is a clip of a family that I absolutely love. Dorothy Hightower has been such a mentor to my daughter Dawn. When Dawn was a drug addict, um, Dorothy reached out to her. Dorothy taught her the Bible. Dorothy did so much to bring me, my daughter, back, and I am so forever thankful to that. She also had children herself that were doing the same thing, And she prayed, and she prayed, and she prayed. And her children are now in church every Sunday. They are writing amazing gospel music. They are singing and spreading the word. We can pray ourselves through this. So let's go to a tiny clip with Broken Ground. He works for my son-in-law. Absolutely. He works for my son-in-law, Lonnie Fountain, and uh, some of the hardest work in the world. You have to be inspired to write as you're on a roof, and it's 118 (laughs) degrees. Yeah. Dorothy, welcome back, and thank you for bringing your family. Y'all have been in the studio now, and a CD is in the works. Yes. Okay, the name of the CD is? A Word in Me. The Word in Me. (laughs) Guess why? That's my favorite song. That is such a great song. Such a great song. Now, how did you narrow it down to choose, is it 10 songs or 12 songs? 10. How did y'all choose? Now, Bubba, I know one of your songs is on there that you wrote, right? Sarah, anything you wrote? No. Jen? I have two. Two that you wrote. And Mom? And that's what's seven. left. Seven. <laughs> seven that Mom wrote. Okay. How did you choose? Tell me Tell me your favorite song ever that's going to be on the CD. Mm. That will be hard to do. I love the word in me. I love the one that's here I am. Those are true stories, and that's what makes them so good, I believe. But mm-hmm. I also like He's My King. It's mm-hmm. on there. That's personal to me because, mm-hmm. you know, He is my king, and you, you think. Now, if you have not heard Broken Ground's music, I challenge you, go to YouTube, type in Broken Ground. Dorothy Hightower was a praying, loving mother for many, many years. Her kids were not in church. Her kids were not going down the right path. She prayed them down the right path. And what an amazing, amazing success story there is. And and I just, I thank her all the time. She has no idea how many times a day I thank her for, for giving me my child back because she taught Dawn so much. She taught her the word. And now Dawn leads a Bible group over in Fairmount now. And it's, uh, it's so funny to me because my daughter knows every word in the Bible. It's just crazy. And I'm like, this is nuts. 
But she said, Mama, my foundation at Cool Springs Baptist Church brought me to where I am today because I had that foundation. I had that foundation. Lay the foundation and do that for your children. Now we're going to share the song. We've already shared this once, I think this week, but I thought it was important to share it because I want you to see a true picture of my beautiful Angela. You know, um, when she committed suicide, she did it because she mixed alcohol and drugs. Nothing else was in her body but alcohol and drugs. She had taken a prescription drug that her doctor prescribed as she was battling cancer. Be very cautious, everybody, be very cautious. If you are prescribed something for, if you have major surgery and you're prescribed something, please be cautious. Many addicts walking around today were prescribed something that they took and then felt like they couldn't live without. And Angela got to a point that she just would get all tense and upset if she didn't have this and it was an antidepressant. So with that, she mixed alcohol. But I want you to look at her face. I want you to look at her smiles. And I want you to remember this beautiful song that her friend Mike Rizuko wrote. Then I want you to think about what Mike's daughters are facing Father's Day. Mike ended his life too. He was a wonderful friend to my child all of their life through school. They were just dear friends. His children are now having grandchildren, and he's not here for them. And it's so sad because Mike was such a good guy. But he had a medical injury, and he, I think, got hooked on the pain pills because you just have to be cautious. So, you know, don't say, oh, it'll be okay. No, sometimes people have that. Their body just has whatever it has to hook you. And so it is so important to not do that and to be cautious. Be cautious. Be like me, be brave, and just do Advil and ibuprofen. But, mm, wow, it's tough. Okay, here we go to some beautiful photos of Angela and, again, a song that I hope will touch your heart. Thank you. 
Okay, now, we're going to end today, you know, it's the Sherry Show. We've got to end today making it the Dwight Sanford, Mr. L.J. Show. I love, out of all his music, my favorite song is I've Been Wrong Before. So as a gift to him for Father's Day, from everybody out there who loves this song, you're going to get to hear Dwight Sanford and one of his I think it's his best, you know, that's just my opinion, and opinions don't cost you nothing, but I love this song, and we've all been wrong before about something, and I think this song says it best. Y'all have a great, great day, and I'll see you again soon, only on ETC. The bank says it's foreclosing and the pickup needs repair The LP tank's on zero And my wheel is almost there The hope I had left with you When you walked out the door I would say things can't get worse But I've been wrong before The postman brought a letter He said he needs my signature He don't know you had to go And the way you left me But the Lord knows I still do And he knows just what I feel inside And the things I'm going through My brother said there's a bottle That'll make this go away I could drink until it's over A message on my phone I called in to talk to him To see what's going on They're laying off across the plant Employees by the score I would say things can't get worse But I've been wrong before And I could turn to the bottle And make this